Hello there, and welcome back to the English Quarters. This is Serdi, and I welcome you to another episode of Testing Blues, the English Exam Helper Series. Before we continue, I'd like to say thank you to those who patronized the first installment of this series. You have expressed your desire for more of this content based on the number of views and likes that the first episode got. We'll do our best to make more episodes for you guys. Anyway, as always, here are some reminders. If you find this video interesting, or if you love our content in general, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. We're doing our best to make more content, so stay tuned. Follow us on social media too. For Facebook, that's at The English Quarters, and for Twitter, that's at English Quarters. If you missed the last episode, we got you covered. You can find that linked in the description box below. And yes, here's our disclaimer. Testing Blues is designed to help you make use of your knowledge on various topics in English and your intuition to get the best answers from a given set of choices. This series is not an excuse for you to disregard reviewing for your exams, whatever those exams may be. We recognize the fact that it is quite important to study and achieve a certain degree of mastery over the English basics, so please do just that. Treat this series as a supplementary study guide. All right, we're all good. With things out of the way, let's start. In this episode, we are going to discuss how to identify unfamiliar words using our knowledge of the various parts of speech in English. All right, I'll address the elephant in the room, as always. Do we have eight part of speech or nine? Some educators insist that there are eight parts of speech, namely noun, pronoun, verb, adjective, adverb, preposition, conjunction, and interjection, while some insist that there are nine. Noun, pronoun, verb, adjective, adverb, preposition, conjunction, interjection, and article slash determiner. Those who subscribe to the eight part of speech doctrine see articles slash determiners as a classification under adjectives, which is true by the way. While those who subscribe to the nine part of speech doctrine see articles slash determiners as easily recognizable and classifiable. Personally, I'm on the nine parts of speech camp. But I mean, both sides have their own points, so I guess you do you. Like with the Miriam versus Miriam thing on the vocab hub, while most people pronounce it as Miriam, some people are trained to pronounce it as Miriam. I generally prefer Miriam because that's how native speakers pronounce it. But again, you do you. Your choice. A little segue. If you haven't checked out the vocab hub yet, you should do so. I also have the first episode linked in the description box below. Okay, going back, here's a sample question to start us off. There are a lot of pedestrians on the road. I can't speed up. They're in front of me. What is the meaning of the word pedestrian? A. Medics B. Traffic enforcers C. Crosswalks Or D. People on foot Alright, same deal as the last episode. You have 5 seconds to answer. Remember that you can pause the video to give yourself more thinking time. Timer, 
starts now. All right, let's check. If you're with us last episode, you will notice the context clues on the road, which simply means something is on the road. I can't speed up, which means that the person in the situation is probably driving a vehicle and slash or in a hurry. And they're in front of me, which means the person is at a full stop because there are a lot of pedestrians in front of him slash her slash them. From these clues, we can easily eliminate letters A and B. I mean, you normally won't have many medics and traffic enforcers blocking your way, right? Now, we're left with letters C and D. You're probably 60 to 80% sure about letter D at this point, right? Well, if your answer is D, congratulations! Your answer is correct. Here's the thing, there's a factor at play why you got the right answer. You know what that is? It is because you know consciously or subconsciously that the word pedestrians in this question is used as a noun. This causes you to eliminate letter C completely. If it was an adjective, as in pedestrian crossing, aka the lines on the road, the answer might have been letter C. Interesting, right? Let's look at another question that uses the same word. What? His pedestrian painting won the competition? I can't believe it! The competition must have been rigged. What is the meaning of the word pedestrian? A. Person B. Breathtaking C. Crosswalk Or D. Unremarkable Now this is a question. Alright, this time you get 10 seconds. Be sure to make use of the context clues technique that we learned in the last episode, and make sure to note what part of speech pedestrian is in this question. Ready? Timer starts now. Do you have your answer? Let's check. Be honest to yourself. This was a little more difficult, right? Yes. Yes, it is. But let's deconstruct it together. We can take note that the person is in disbelief as expressed by him slash her slash them saying, I can't believe it. And the competition must have been rigged because the person's quote unquote pedestrian painting won the competition. These are the primary context clues here. Now here's the thing. What part of speech is pedestrian in this question? No, it's not a noun. Yes, it is an adjective. An adjective that modifies the word painting. Now that we know that the word is an adjective and that the person is in disbelief that the pedestrian painting won the competition, we can now make an assumption that it probably isn't a drawing of a person, a crosswalk, or of something amazing. It must be something uninteresting, uninspired, or unremarkable. So yes. By knowing what part of speech the word pedestrian is, we got the best answer, which is letter D. Here's another way to get to the answer. Knowing what part of speech the choices are can also help. Take note, 
pedestrian is used as an adjective in this question. If you are asked to find the meaning of the word, it is possible that the correct answer is also the same part of speech as the unfamiliar word. Let's look at the choices. A. Person B. Breathtaking C. Crosswalk D. Unremarkable Choices A and C can be used as adjectives in some situations, but they are normally used as nouns, so we can easily eliminate them. Now, we're left with B and D, which are also adjectives. By combining this with the context clues that we learned by reading the question, we will successfully eliminate letter B and get to letter D, which is the right answer. Pretty amazing, right? Let's do another question. And another one. This is a pedestrian bridge. No bikes or motorcycles allowed. What is the meaning of the word pedestrian? A. Uninspired B. Non-vehicular C. Crosswalk Or D. Hiker Alright, 10 seconds. Timer starts now. Okay, this is definitely easier than the second one. Context clues time. First and foremost, the question clearly says the word bridge. This easily eliminates letter C because a crosswalk is not a bridge. A crosswalk is a marked or painted path on the road that people can use to cross. Now, things get a little more interesting. Like the last sentence, the word pedestrian is used as an adjective here. Letter D is now less likely to be the right answer because hiker is a noun. And with the knowledge that it is an adjective and that no bikes and motorcycles are allowed on the bridge, we can easily see what kind of adjective pedestrian is in this sentence. Yes, the correct answer is letter B. Okay, that's a wrap. Here are some takeaways for episode number two. Number one, knowing what part of speech an unfamiliar word is can help us eliminate wrong choices in some questions. And number two, both the unfamiliar word and the correct choice are likely classified under the same part of speech. If the unfamiliar word is a noun, then the correct choice must be a noun. If the unfamiliar word is a verb, then the correct choice must be a verb. If the unfamiliar word is an adjective, then the correct choice must be an adjective. And so on and so forth. Once again, I'll leave you with some questions that you can work on. Be sure to use what we learned from the previous episode and this episode to get to the answers. Answers will be given after 5 seconds. And yes, feel free to pause the video to give yourself more thinking time. Best of luck!
congratulations, and thank you for finishing episode two of this series. So, how about you? Did you find this episode interesting or helpful? Do you have any stories about making use of your knowledge of the parts of speech to get some free points in exams? Let me know in the comment section below. And yes, if a friend of yours needs some tips on answering exams, I would appreciate it if you shared this video with them. Once again, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, especially if you find this video helpful or if you just love what we do. More videos to come soon. Follow us on social media too. For Facebook, that's at The English Quarters. And for Twitter, that's at English Quarters. Again, this is Serdi. Padayo, English learners. God bless you.